Moving inside of the cell, we have a substance called cytoplasm. Basically, the cytoplasm includes everything inside of the cell except for the nucleus. Okay, so there are th really three key things that the cytoplasm includes. It includes that fluid that we mentioned, the cytosol, that's the gel-like substance. Um, it includes organelles, which are floating in the cytosol. And then we also have a stru uh, structures called cytoskeleton. These are basically fibers that exist throughout the cell and they help to support things. It's almost kind of like a skeleton. Uh, we'll see this a little bit later on in more detail. So what we're going to do is look inside of the cell, and I think where we'll start is with the nucleus. So this is the one thing that is not part of the cytoplasm. Okay, let me just go on to the next slide and we'll take a look at a picture together. So here's a small schematic of that general animal cell. Um, plasma membrane is in yellow. Cytoplasm is the sort of teal green color and all these organelles that are floating inside. And then right here in purple, here's the nucleus. Okay, so the nucleus, remember, this one is the very special place where DNA is housed. So we like to say that it's like the control center of a eukaryotic cell. This is where all of the instructions are kept. Um, and that DNA that's housed inside of here, okay, so inside of here, it's packaged in a special way. And it's packaged with proteins. And that packaged form of DNA is called chromatin. The thing that separates the chromatin from the rest of the cell is the nuclear envelope. <laughs> so think about what is an envelope, right? It's just something that sort of encloses other things. Same idea here. The nuclear envelope encloses all of the DNA, all of the chromatin, and it helps to keep it separated from the rest of the cytoplasm, the rest of the cell. There are some pores in the nuclear envelope, little spots where there are openings, and that allows certain substances to cross through. We'll see that in just a minute. We also have, inside of the nucleus, there's something called a nucleolus. So these names, be a little careful with these names. Some of them start to sound really familiar, uh, really similar, rather. So the whole thing is called a nucleus, and then the special structure inside is called a nucleolus right here, this word. The nucleolus is the site where ribosomes are made. We're gonna meet a ribosome in just a moment. Hold that thought. I'd like to show you just a little bit more of a detailed picture of the chromatin and the DNA. Let's take a look at how the DNA is packaged in here. So DNA, we met this in the last chapter. DNA um, likes to exist in a double-stranded form and it's a very long molecule. So the way that this is stored is um, it gets wrapped around proteins that are shown in purple. It gets wrapped around these proteins and then that whole structure wraps into a larger coil. This is kind of like an old telephone cord if you've ever played with one of those. Um, it's, it's wrapped around and around and around and then that gets packaged even further into larger coils and this whole thing is called a chromosome. So I'm sure you've heard of chromosomes before. A chromosome is just this very organized structure of basically DNA packaged with protein. So that's chromatin. Chromatin is the DNA wrapped around these proteins. Okay, uh, while we're here, we might as well introduce a couple of other words. What is a gene? When we talk about genes, we know that genes are units of inheritance, like you inherit genes from your parents. Uh, but what is actually a gene? A gene is just a stretch, a particular section of the DNA. And what a gene encodes is information for making a protein. So to make a protein, what needs to happen is one gene, one section of DNA, would get copied. And we say that it gets transcribed. Uh, when it gets transcribed, okay, basically there's a little machine that comes along and reads the sequence of nucleotides here, and it would make a complementary strand of RNA, ribonucleic acid. Okay, that RNA molecule then would be able to leave the nucleus through a nuclear pore, and it would go out into the cytoplasm and bind to a ribosome. So let me show you a ribosome. Here's a sort of a model of a ribosome. It has a large subunit and a smaller subunit down below. And what the ribosome does is it translates the message on that RNA strand. 
Um, I've been just referring to this as RNA. Notice in the words it has M in front of it, mRNA. That M stands for messenger, messenger RNA. This is a molecule that just takes a message from the nucleus out to a ribosome. Okay, so the ribosome, basically what it will do is slide along the mRNA molecule and it translates the message. So it's going to translate the message on, uh, the message encoded in the nucleotides, it's going to translate that into a sequence of amino acids and it will build a protein. This is really amazing, amazing that cells can do all of this. There are a few different places where ribosomes hang out in the cell. Some of them are just uh, floating freely in the cytosol. Others are stuck on the outside of the nuclear membrane. And then there are others that are attached to what's called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And I'll show you a picture of that in just a little bit. So that was a lot of information. Let's just kind of recap it here. We were talking about DNA that's stored in the nucleus of the cell. And if we're going to express a gene from that DNA, what's going to happen? Well, the end result is we're going to make a protein. Okay? Each gene encodes one protein. So let's just kind of run through this process again one more time. We start with the DNA, we transcribe the, the, uh, transcribe the gene that's on the DNA, transcribe it into a molecule of mRNA. And that process is called transcription. After transcription, this mRNA molecule will slide out through a nuclear pore, it'll come out here into the cytoplasm and find a ribosome. The ribosome will slide along the RNA molecule and read the sequence of nucleotides. And while it's doing that, it will build um, a protein. It will connect together amino acids in order to make this final protein product. 